trolls. Big, dumb, and ugly. Creatures that have become another staple of modern fantasy. But what if the trolls we know today differed in the past? What if there was more to them? Today we are indeed diving back into Norse mythology and Scandinavian folklore, as we take a look at the history of trolls and how they appear today. <laughs> Honey. What are you doing? This video is about trolls, not goblins. You had your chance in the goblin video, and you blew it. Now get back in your cage, you filthy little goblin. Honey. No, I'm not giving you any more money. Last time I lent you money, you went straight to the casino. No, stupid. Honey. Oh, honey. Goblins and trolls may be extremely annoying and very, very stupid creatures. Stupid. But even they know when a great offer is smacking them in the face. And speaking of being smacked in the face by a great offer, today's video is sponsored by Honey, the free browser extension that helps you find promo codes and saves you money when shopping online. If 2021 is anything like this year, then I know I need a new coffee machine. Or maybe your pet dog slash goblin has chewed up the baby Yoda cushions you bought as presents, and now you need to replace them. Once I proceed to the checkout, before I pay for my order, Honey will scour the web for any available promo codes and apply them for me. As you can see here, it's found a 10% discount code, and I've saved £13.20 for doing nothing. Adding the Honey extension is completely free. It works on all browsers and only takes a few clicks to install. All you have to do is visit joinhoney.com slash myth and fiction. That's joinhoney.com slash myth and fiction. A big thanks to Honey for sponsoring this video. If you'd also like to see if you can save some money during the holiday period, then check them out today. When discussing trolls, elves, or any supernatural creature that appears or is mentioned in Norse mythology, it's important to note that they may differ from today's expectations. In modern fantasy, most of these terms refer to a specific race, and it's fairly easy to identify said race with a brief description of their appearance or behaviour. Early 20th century authors such as Robert E. Howard, Tolkien, and many others certainly contributed to this. In the Norse sagas, it's pretty much the reverse. In Old Icelandic, the term troll or trollslege refers to numerous supernatural beings, such as ghosts and witches. It's not a term that can be easily defined, nor was it meant to be. If it was meant to refer to something scary, then having a level of ambiguity certainly leaves room for the imagination. The easiest comparison I can make today is with the bogey or boogeyman. It has no set appearance, but we know it's supposed to mean something scary. We do know, however, the negative connotation of a troll extends to more than just being something scary. Waking a troll from their slumber was forbidden, just as it was to sit down and have a meal with one. This then led to the idea that trolls may have been witches and heretics who had been excommunicated. Therefore, we can look at a troll as someone living in isolation, someone who society deemed a nuisance with no real value. The first attempts to define trolls in Norse myth then came much later, where the term was used to describe a number of things, from Jotna and witches to someone who may have just been abnormally big or very ugly. Most of the time, they could be found dwelling inside of rocks, mountains, and caves by themselves. Interactions with them are almost always negative, and as we mentioned earlier, they were considered someone or something you should probably avoid. Hundreds of years later, in Scandinavian folklore, trolls became much more defined. They were very old and extremely large creatures, with their strength being their biggest asset. Picking a fight with a troll head-on would be ill-advised, as their favourite meal was man-flesh. As seen in many of the early stories, the way to best a troll is to outsmart them, as they are rather slow and dim-witted. A story that I remember being told as a child is the Norwegian fairy tale Three Billy Goats Gruff. The story itself was first published in 1841, but is still told even to this day. The story is about three billy goats trying to cross a bridge. In the story I was told, the goats are brothers, but their relation can vary. 
The meadow where the goats live has no more grass to eat, so they have to cross the river into the next meadow where the grass is indeed greener. In order to do so they have to cross a bridge. Under this bridge lives an evil troll. When the youngest brother crosses he is stopped by the troll. You would make for a lovely meal. The youngest goat does not panic. Instead he outsmarts the troll. Why would you want to eat me? I'm just a baby. My brother behind me is much bigger. You should eat him. And so the troll agrees, allowing the smallest goat to pass safely. When the next brother crosses, the troll stops him and gives him the same threat. Yes, bigger indeed. You will also make for a lovely meal. The middle brother copies the youngest. You could eat me right now, but you'd still be hungry. Why not wait for our oldest brother? He'll feed you for days. Once again, the troll agrees to let the goat pass safely. When the eldest brother crosses, he is given the same threat. Oh yes, you will feed me for days. This time, he does not try to outsmart the troll. The eldest brother is much bigger. He charges towards the troll and knocks him off the bridge with his horns. The troll is then carried away by the current and never seen again. The three billy goats and anyone who uses the bridge live happily ever after. I know when we discuss goblins, there were tales of them kidnapping children, and this also applies for trolls. The Swedish author Helena Nyblom wrote a fairy tale titled The Changeling. In this story, a princess is snatched from her cradle by a troll who leaves his own child in her place. Both of these children grow up never really being accepted because of how different they are. A troll being raised by humans and a human being raised by trolls may create an issue or two. The human princess is repulsed by the troll way of living, and the troll princess is bored by the human way. Once they come of age and must find a husband, they decide it's time to escape and return home. Both of them pass each other in the forest, not knowing who the other one is. Reuniting with their rightful families, they live happily ever after, finding the acceptance they desired. The illustration for this story shows us that trolls may not have always been seen as large creatures. Nyblum's story aside, Swedish trolls do tend to be on the larger side. Big enough you often see them depicted in the shape of a mountain or an entire forest. Trolls in Swedish folklore maintain a connection to nature. There is also the belief that lightning and thunder would scare trolls away. This goes back to the term troll once being used to describe a Jotun. Thor being the god of lightning and thunderstorms coupled with his disdain for the Jotna means that thunder and lightning to a troll may signify that Thor is nearby and they might be about to get their head smashed in. Trolls were also not too fond of church bells. In some stories, when towns and villages were plagued by trolls, they would routinely ring their bells to force the trolls to leave. A common response to this was for the trolls to attack and destroy churches, normally hurling large rocks and boulders from a distance as to not get too close to the bells. When you come across Scandinavian landmarks that involve large rock formations, they will sometimes be described as the remains of boulders thrown by trolls, or even as trolls who have been turned into stone from gazing into the sun. In Norway and Denmark, you have what they refer to as troll folk and mountain folk. These trolls are much smaller, but they can still grow to the size of a man. They're said to be found living in burial grounds, caves, and other dark places, which implies they may also dislike sunlight. So I guess with all of this information, we can try to understand how trolls have changed over the years. We know there are different types of trolls. Mountain trolls, you could argue, would be amongst the biggest. Forest trolls would be able to blend in with their environment the best. River trolls live under bridges, and internet trolls are by far the most grotesque and unloved, hence their constant need for attention. There are some other shared characteristics such as being dim-witted, unable to stay in direct sunlight, and having a taste for human flesh. What I find interesting is the change in attitudes towards trolls. 
The earliest trolls were ambiguous figures that were meant to scare you in order to keep you away, but as time went on, they became much more comical. We see this in the earlier Scandinavian fairy tales. Trolls appear quite often as the butt of a joke, or as a character that exists to be bested by the protagonist. In modern fiction and cinema, you do get quite an even split between comical trolls and terrifying trolls. I know for me growing up, I can think of two very different film experiences. You have the troll in the girl's bathroom in the first Harry Potter, which even as a child, you could tell was meant to be somewhat comical, and then you have the troll in the Mines of Moria in the Fellowship of the Ring, which is not so comical. Regardless of how we see trolls today, there is no denying they have a rich and interesting history. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained. <sighs> right, I can finally go to the bathroom. <laughs> shopping time. What are you doing now? I, I didn't even leave the room. Nothing. You were about to try and buy a hundred Baby Yodas again, weren't you? No. You know what? I'm done. I'm done. I know a guy in Finland who wants to trade a baby troll for a goblin, and that seems like a pretty good deal to me. But it's Christmas! Yeah, it is Christmas, and you'll get to spend it in Lapland with Santa and his elves. Now get away from the laptop, and go and pack your bags, you grubby little goblin. Mah! Humbug. I hate humans. <laughs>